Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the estimation of variance. So this is going to be very similar to um, the derivation of least squares, except for we're looking for the other thing. When we derive least squares, we suppose that we had some observations of a normal random variable, and then we estimated the mean. Okay, now here we suppose that we have a bunch of observations of a normal random variable, and this time we're going to estimate the standard deviation. But notice the title here is Maximum Likelihood Estimate of Variance. It turns out I'm going to get go about this by estimating the variance and then take the square root. So even though I'm, my goal is really to estimate the standard deviation, because that's what we use more often, that's what makes a little bit more sense to us than the variance, we're going to have to get the variance first. Okay, so this is a subjective question. How should something be estimated? Uh, the main method that we've talked about the, in this class is maximum likelihood. So we're going to look at it from the perspective of maximum likelihood. So maximum likelihood says I should maximize the PDF, the product of the PDFs evaluated at my observations. So I want to maximize the product from I equals 1 to N, and then the PDF of a normal distribution looks like 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma. Whoops. Actually, I am going to leave that sigma squared, and I want to put it under the square root. We usually use sigma in this class um, and leave it outside the square root, but it's the same thing if I write sigma squared, have the variance there, and put it under the square root, times e to the power of negative, let's see, we have xi minus mu squared divided by 2 sigma squared. So we want to maximize this thing. One note here, in the book I use s squared um, instead of the sigma squared, and that's just, in this video I'm going to start off with sigma squared, I'm going to switch to s squared later, I just want to let you know that discrepancy is there. Eventually I need to, do need to switch to s squared because we're talking about a standard deviation of a data set. We're going to work off of data rather than the theoretical distribution. It's a theoretical distribution that we're trying to approximate. So I just wanted to point that out in the book I have s squared. I will eventually switch to that here, but I'm going to wait longer. Okay, I can rewrite this. This term does not depend on i, so if I multiply it by itself i times, that just means I raise it to the power of i. So I have 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared. And again, I know it might feel funny to have a sigma squared under the square root, but um, we're trying to estimate variance. So that's variance, sigma squared. So that's why I'm putting it under the square root. So I do have the variance there. And then I have a product of e to the power of some stuff. Well, that just means I have e to the power of the sum from i equals 1 to n of negative xi minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Okay, so I want to maximize this. And in particular, I want to maximize it by choosing an appropriate sigma squared. That's what I'm trying to estimate here. So this time I'm thinking of mu as being constant. Well, I can pull out the negative 1 over 2 sigma squared, and this becomes 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared to the power of n times e to the negative 1 over 2 sigma squared times the sum as i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu squared. Now if I'm trying to estimate sigma squared, notice that this summation doesn't depend on what I'm trying to estimate. So I'm just going to give that a name c, so that I don't have to keep writing it. So our goal here is to maximize 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma squared to the n times e to the minus 1 over 2 sigma squared times, whoops, times c. Okay, 
by choosing sigma squared. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to sigma squared. I'm actually going to replace sigma squared by v, and then we're going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So I'm going to have 1 over square root of 2 pi v to the power of n times e to the negative Let's see, we'll do a 0.5 for 1 half. Now this is variance on the bottom, so it has a power of negative 1 on it, and then we're multiplying by c. Okay. So we're letting sigma squared equals v, and we're going to take the derivative with respect to v and set it equal to 0. You might remember from Calc 1, that's a very common way to get about finding the maximum or the minimum of something. In this case, we want to maximize it. Okay, so I'm going to need to pull up maple to do that. So let me do that here. Okay, so I'm going to differentiate that expression. I'm going to diff, D-I-F-F -F in maple stands for differentiate, 1 divided by the square root. I need a square root, so let me find that. It's right there of 2 times pi, Let's, i got to find pi, there's pi, 2 pi times v, let's put multiply signs in there, sometimes maple doesn't like it if you don't put those in there, I'm going to close off that parenthesis, raise that to the power of n, and then I have e to the power of negative 0 0.5 times v to the power of negative 1 times c. Okay, and I want to differentiate with respect to v. Since I have more than one letter floating around, I got a v and I have a c, um, I need to tell it what I want to differentiate with respect to. And here it is. It's rather nasty. That's because we have to apply a product rule with all kinds of chain rules floating around. But since we have a computer algebra system here, it's not too hard to work with. Okay, so here's the derivative. Now what I want to do is take that derivative and set it equal to zero. So I'm going to solve the equation. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. That derivative equals zero, and I need to tell it what variable to solve for. I'm going to solve for v. Okay. So if I do that and I press enter, it tells me the only place where that derivative is zero. It tells me the only place where that derivative is zero. Well, that derivative is zero for c times the natural log of e. Natural log of e is just one. Okay, so we just have c over n here. We just have c over n. So what we did, we took this function, we differentiated with respect to v, and then we, saw, we set that equal to zero and solved for v, and we got c over n. Since that's the only place where the derivative is zero, and the derivative exists, then that's going to be the place that our expression is maximized at. So let me go back to Microsoft Paint. Okay, and we saw that we, when we maximize that, that means that we let v be c over n. And remember that c was this guy. It was the sum of the squared deviations. So the variance is estimated by 1 over n times the sum of the squared deviation. And since this is how we estimate the variance, I really should have put a subscript of v or we can write that as s squared. Since this is not a Greek letter, it indicates I'm not actually dealing with a theoretical distribution. I'm instead dealing with data. And that is 1 over n times the sum as i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu squared. Okay. That is the maximum likelihood estimator for the variance. So then to get the maximum likelihood estimator for the standard deviation, we would just take the square root. Okay. What we're going to find, however, that is that in a sense this is still not the best estimate. It ends up being biased, and we will see that later. First we'll see it via an example, and then we'll show it analytically. Um, but you'll have to wait till the next video to get that. So I will see you in a few minutes.